First of all, we're going to do our invocation tonight. So we've got Pastor Michael Harris from the North Hills Church of God of Prophecy here to open up our session tonight. So, Pastor. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for your mercy, your grace, and your loving kindness that you've shown unto each and every one of us. <coughs> Lord, we come before you now as many come to do business on behalf of this county. We ask of you, Lord God, that you would grant wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, that we can serve this county and that the people of Warren County will truly be blessed. I ask of you, Lord, to help us to put our personal agendas aside and work together and pull together for the citizens of Warren County. Father, I ask your blessings upon this session. As they do business, I ask of you that you would fill them with wisdom beyond their years and beyond our understanding. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray these things and let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. If you'll remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. <coughs> Before we get started, i got a little something to say, and then we'll move on with roll call, adoption of docket. It is day 216 for all of us sitting here as a new commission. And I commend the commission and all your members for your support and team effort in improving the lives of our citizens. We've all worked hard to move the county forward. A lot of great progress is being made across all county departments as we promote effective and efficient government. Cutting the cost of operations has been one of my priorities. The budget process is moving forward. Committees have discussed department requests and finance director Cotton will be putting a consolidated budget together for budget and finance and financial management's consideration and approval. We're still awaiting some incoming numbers on revenues and expenditures and nonprofit requests should be completed this week. Director Cotton has monitored spending across all departments and I ask each official to spend cautiously and focus only on needs. As a result, the deficit that was approved in last year's budget could be less than predicted. There's some other promising numbers as well. Sales tax collections are up. The General Assembly passed the online sales tax legislation, but we've been cautioned not to overestimate those numbers. And so we're waiting on some figures from the state. We're also awaiting the final amount of the unclaimed properties held by the state. Economic growth and new construction will enhance assessment and revenues. And the latest uh, tax sales went very well with a large number of delinquent properties to be sold later this fall. After several internal analysis of expenditures, I'm now exploring also a revenue enhancement audit. So as per Bob Bass's recommendations to keep the jail certified and code compliant, we're moving forward with our approved list of upgrades. I commend Sheriff Myers and his staff for all their hard work and determination to lower inmate populations and make the necessary changes, changes to facility operations. Thank you to the County Corrections Partnership Committee members for fulfilling their role outlined in TCA as you strive to improve the local correctional environment through awareness and education. My Criminal Justice Task Force has embraced the work that we've completed at the jail and cooperated with all of us to promote the corrections that need to be made. At the jail, the high set GED program is in place with the first group getting ready to graduate. We were ready to put a soft skills application as well into place. So I want to thank the TCAT and the Department of Labor for their contributions. Hope is on the way for a lot of inmates and their families. The new fiber and wiring is almost completed at the jail with most of the computers in place and software installed. And now the jail can file state reports, classify inmates and effectively operate without computer failure and security breaches. TVs have been mounted and a kiosk have been installed. Uh, Bob Bass's plan also included and recommended that security cameras and door locks be upgraded, and we're awaiting the final assessment to put that plan into action. ESG's final report on jail costs could be in by June 7th or earlier. The sheriff and staff have concluded that all necessary internal improvements 
be made first on the existing jail before a build-out is considered. Then a long-term plan can be implemented to, meet, implemented to meet the future needs of the jail. As Bob recommended, all efforts should be made to correct, correct the current deficiencies and lack of staffing in order to keep us code compliant. With the progress already made and improvements continuing, Mr. Bass says he has no problem completing his report for the sheriff and I to submit to the state in order for us to remain certified. That is something that we all should be celebrating. Daily across all county buildings, we continue to address failing roofs and HVAC units. Repairs and replacements are emergency situations sometimes, as it was a week or so ago at the courthouse. And it's dealt with individually by maintenance super, supervisor Greg Bowden and the officials. I'm waiting to call from the state to see if there might be some funds available for the health department roof. The FEMA mitigation monies may be able to address the continuing flooding in this basement and our FEMA reports have been submitted for approval which should help our road department and Superintendent Glenn with the needed funds for repairs on the Irving College roads. The final report on the next phase of ADA compliance will be ready to present soon. Some repairs can be completed within the next few months, but others will require probably a line item in next year's budget. Security in these buildings has become a major concern for myself and employees, and it's gonna to have to be addressed as an expenditure at some point. And so the employee phase for ADA has also got to be phased in soon. In my last cabinet meeting, I asked each elected official and department director to prepare a capital improvement plan for the county so we can begin a long-term budget plan for much needed projects. We hope to include a capital improvement line item in the new proposed budget. And as elected officials, we must be proactive and plan the most effective use of our tax dollars. And we cannot continue delays because we cannot afford to fix them years down the road continuously. As always, Director Cotton and I are available to answer any of these questions concerning the budget. Committee meetings are always open and questions are always answered. Together we build a better tomorrow for all of our residents. Collectively, we can invest in our children, promote the safety across the community, and grow our tax base through economic growth and job creation. Being good stewards means planning for the future. You have 1,200 days left in our terms to make that happen. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get to work. The taxpayers expect no less from the 24 commissioners who sit here and legislate from this courtroom or from the elected officials who work every day to make Warren County government run efficiently. Onward, stronger, together. That's how we accomplish our goals. So with that being said, roll call. Michael Bell. Here. Carl Diebolden. Here. Carl Ebolden. Here. Carly Brown. Here. Here. Randy England. Here. Deborah Evans. Here. Steve Glenn. Richard Grissom. Here. Stephen Helton. Here. Robert Hennessy. Here. Lori Jenkins. Here. Ron Lee. Here. Gary Martin. Here. Daniel Owens. Here. Gary Prater. Here. Christy Ross. Here. Scott Rubley. Here. Tommy Savage. Here. Tyrone Sparkman. Here. 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 Thank you. Next item is adoption of docket. Is there a motion to adopt the docket as presented? We have a motion from Commissioner Judkins, a second from Commissioner Hennessy. All in favor of adoption of the docket say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Reading of minutes. I think all of you had minutes from the last uh, county commission meeting. For April presented to you is our motion dispensed with reading and present uh, to uh, approve as presented. So we have Commissioner <coughs> Stotts making that motion. Excuse me, but I've got pneumonia, so I've been suffering the last couple of days. So um, we have Commissioner Stotts. We have a second. We have a second from Commissioner Sparkman, I believe, raised his hand first. All in favor of adoption of minutes, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. No public comment uh, was requested for tonight. In employee recognition, I'm going to wait uh, till we do our little presentations. Next item is elected officials and departmental reports. Uh, first report is the finance. Mr. Cotton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, commissioners, I believe you have my report. I'll take any questions you have at this time. Commissioner Cotton, <laughs> Director Cotton, sorry about that. Uh, I did have a couple of questions. Um, 
referring to uh, the bond money that we uh, have spent. I just wanted to get everybody up to speed on where we're at. And on your report, that is going to fall under 171, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, bond money spent for the jail specifically will be the top expenditure, I believe it's 91120. And, and just for clarification on this, uh, the school system and the jail are both out of this, so I was having some trouble distinguishing, and thanks to Director Cotton for pointing out the 35 is uh, is what we spent this far thus far on the bond. Um, other things that I was wanting to educate everybody else on is we are actually um, have spent right at $75,000. Is that a correct number, Director Cotton? Yes. Um, since the March report, we purchased computers uh, for the jail, which, was, which totaled about $39,000. Okay, and and then there was some also some radios and stuff that's not fell on this. So uh, expenditures is seventy five thousand, and then on the books for the bond money because it's not falling in this. There's about eighty three thousand and some change that's still open on that. Correct. Correct. Of open POs, yes. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that and uh, make sure everybody was in in it uh, knew what was going on with with the bond money and where we were at with it. Has anyone else got? Director Cotton, I would like to ask, what is our balance right now in debt service? Uh, as of the end of March, you talking about our fund balance? Uh, I believe it is, it's right around 10 or 11 million. However, we do need to, you know, know that in late May, early June is when we pay about half of the expenses for the year. So that will drop significantly in the next couple of weeks. So it'll, it will we'll write out um, about a million dollars or more worth of uh, principal and interest payments right at the end of May. Does anyone else? Do we have a motion to approve? A motion from Carly Bolden. Do we have a second? Second from Commissioner Brown. All in favor of adoption say aye. Uh, Any opposed? Thank you. Next is Highway Department, Superintendent Glenn. I believe he couldn't make it tonight. Uh, he asked me to fill in for him. He has completed the first round of mowing, and he's getting ready to start back over again. <coughs> he's been to three meetings over some of the FEMA money, and he's just waiting on some of it to be processed. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, we'll try to get an answer for it. Do we have a motion to adopt? How we report motion, Mr. South second from Commissioner Helton. All in favor of adoption say aye. Aye. The opposed motion carries. Sanitation Department Chair recognizes Mr. Josh Roberts, who might, I might say is doing a fine job in sanitation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, you should have my report. If you have any questions, I'd be proud to answer them now. We have a motion from Commissioner Bell. We have a second from Commissioner Judkins. All in favor of adoption say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. And uh, I'll ask Commissioner Wilcher to give us a little update on the dedication thing a little bit later. Sheriff's Thank Department, you. you want to do it now? Okay. Sanitation Department is complete. Sheriff's Department, Sheriff Myers. something come up so it was submitted so if you've had time to review that report Move so to adopt. motion to adopt from Commissioner Lee second Mr. Carl Lee Bolden all in favor of adoption say aye, aye. any opposed thank you War County Schools quarterly report recognize Director Cox thank you Mr. Chairman I think you have my board if there's any questions <coughs> you have I'll try to answer <coughs> We have a motion from Carl D. Bolden to adopt. We have a second for Commissioner Savage. All in favor of adoption say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Next is committee reports. So, Chair recognizes Chairman uh, Richard Grissom for budget and finance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Budget and finance committee is in the currently in the budget reviewing process and our next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, May the 30th at 6.30. Thank you. 
Thank you. Building and Grounds, Carly Bolden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, Building and Grounds has nothing to report. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Economic and Agricultural Development, Chairman uh, Gary Martin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Economic and Agriculture Committee has nothing to report this time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, education, Chairman Carlene Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At our last education meeting, we, um, <coughs> we met at the Bobby Ray School and toured that. It was very, very impressive to see the project moving along. And if anybody wants an individual tour, Mr. Cox would be glad to arrange something for you if you would like to see it, if you missed out on that. Also, our next meeting is on June the 3rd at 5 o'clock. Thank you. Financial Management Director uh, Cotton. Financial Management has nothing to report at this time. Health and Welfare, uh, Chairman Blaine Wilcher. That's where I thought you might get that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, with uh, animal control, we have our job posting closed now, so they will be uh, looking at that. Uh, hopefully soon we'll know who our new director will be. Also, just, just for general knowledge, uh, as a committee, uh, we did pass a budget uh, adding an additional part-time uh, person uh, to Animal Control and Adoption Center. It will increase our budget uh, by about $9,000, but that, is, that will be up to financial management. Also, uh, Josh did turn in a, a budget that's equal to last year's with the clerical help added, which we'll be voting on later. The uh, dedication went well for Steve. He was really impressed. Uh, had a lot of his past employees and current employees there and some friends, and I uh, think he wound up staying until about 8.30, maybe 9. I left a little early, but uh, he really enjoyed it. And uh, Josh and everybody done a great job. Uh, appreciate all the committee for pitching in and helping with that also. And and Executive Haley, and uh, also the tour that we made uh, of City Animal Control uh, before our meeting was, was uh, an eye-opener for us uh, to see what David does and to kind of know uh, what his, his situation is and how we can continue to work together. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Make a motion, we approve that. <coughs> Highway and Bridge, Commissioner Prater. I really don't have a whole lot to talk about other than we're going to call a meeting next week and uh, I think we're going to get our budget completed and everything where we can turn it in. Thank you. Thank you. Policy and Personnel, Chairman Savage. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Policy and Personnel has nothing to report at this time. Some people have asked me why we have not had anything to report in a long time, but it's because we've not had problems that comes before policy and personnel, and that's always a good thing. Everything is going smooth, and at one time, there were certain jobs that were a revolving door, and that has stabilized, and, and they're, those guys are doing a great, guys and gals are doing a great job. Thank you, great employees. County Corrections Partnership, Chairman Helton. Thank you, Executive Haley. Uh, a few things to report. Uh, we did have a meeting this last uh, uh, month, and we we looked at some reallocation of funds, and it, it went before uh, budget and finance, and it'll show up before next meeting where we uh, reallocated about $109,000 uh, to buy some tasers and stop, uh, stop sticks and uh, some handheld radios, some actresses and different things. And I just want to go ahead and uh, put a plug in there for next round whenever it comes before the full court to, to support this. And this giving uh, the sheriff uh, some of his much needed supplies uh, for uh, uh, for his uh, jail and, and also for his officers and road, uh, road deputies. Um, Inmates are on the rise, uh, summer funds out, and so uh, we are getting some numbers back in the, j the jail, so we do need to be thinking about, you know, what we're going to do on our facility and, and the expansion of, uh, so we can accommodate uh, uh, the uh, increasing amount, uh, and that is one thing uh, I would like to, I guess, question, the, uh, the date of when we could uh, get some movement on, on the building phase of this, uh, Executive Haley, and where we're going to be. Uh, looking at and moving forward with uh, some of those plans. Do we know when we're going to be able to do that yet? We're still looking at some numbers, and ESG's got some assessments on the cost. Like I said in my speech, first week in June, we should know what all those internal improvements, we should have a rough cost estimate on those, at least uh, uh, so we can start planning for the next phase of it. But just like Mr. Bass recommended, we need to be looking at what we can do internally to fix the things before we uh, start looking at build-outs. The build-outs would be the, 
the extra supply room so we can get that uh, that uh, education room, training room. Uh, now we'll accommodate that, and the trailer that we got out there from TCAT will not accommodate the programs that we went want to implement. I do want to congratulate and commend uh, Commissioner Stotts for his work on trying to get some extra counseling out there, and I would like to uh, recommend that in, that in the budget for the Sheriff's Department that we try to figure in a full-time counselor at the jail, so particularly in booking, that's where the most critical assessment needs to be done, and uh, I just think that that's important if we're going to move forward with any internal improvements, that we make that assessment ahead of time and not after an incident has happened or after we're you know, implicated in something that was beyond our control. So that's once again to educate and be proactive, which is what uh, County Corrections Partnership is supposed to be helping to do. So thank you. I'll, I'll agree with Executive Haley. Uh, they've been doing a phenomenal job out there. And uh, one thing, uh, as we're talking about uh, programs and different stuff, you know, we'll reiterate, if, if you've got a church organization or uh, a financial uh, institute or anything that you feel like you can give back to these inmates, that's one thing that we want to try to increase. Having that program space is critical, and that's one thing I want to really push toward is getting, getting that going on. Uh, but in the same aspect, we need volunteers, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you've got something you think you can offer, even uh, Commissioner England here has uh, talked about doing some trade stuff and, and being able to met, uh, use the tape measures to give you certifications. That's the kind of stuff we need. Uh, and so uh, we just need to increase that and any volunteers to get with us and we can, we can move forward in that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Redistricting committee has nothing to report, but uh, the census will be coming up soon. And so the census committee is already organized. We'll be meeting again uh, as well. So that's a collective partnership across the community. It's very important that we get our numbers. Uh, County Correcting. Oh, yeah, I skipped something. I'm sorry, I said skipped, skipped you there, Ron Lee. So, Thank Chairman you, Lee, I, I apologize. Thank you, sir. That's fine. Uh, at this time, we have nothing to report. Thank you. So, any other reports to be made for the commission tonight? Then we'll move on to special presentations. Uh, one of these I've asked to do, some of you have asked about Tri-County Railroad and what its operations are and why it's important and critical to economic development in Warren County. I think uh, Mr. Don Alexander from the IDB will say that without a railroad, um, you know, our chances of landing several types of industries or keeping industries such as Bridgestone would be impossible without that railroad. Uh, when that railroad line was abandoned, the Tri-County Railroad Association was basically formed. So I would like to recognize tonight Pat Conyers, if you want to come up and give a little bit about your credentials, a little bit about Tri-County Railroad, and there will be a resolution that we will be considering as item uh, number three under new business tonight to do the adequate funding in order to keep our railroad operating. give a little bit of history about what's happened to us. <coughs> My name is Pat Conyers. I'm the executive director of the County Railroad Authority. Four years ago, the Department of Revenue in the state of Tennessee was... I don't think the microphone's working. I have to move it towards you or... All right. Still not. Now, is it working? It's working now. Now it is. Now. Now it is. Four years ago, the Department of Revenue was sued because of a tax situation involving the funding for the short line railroads. Uh, that money was sequestered and kept for four years, and now it's been released in December of 2018. During that time, all that money had continued to accumulate in their budget, in their <coughs> escrow account, and the Tri-County Railroad Authority has accumulated $5 million to use for rehab on our track. TDOT has changed the way that the funding sources has uh, been used now. We used to be able to match that money with in-count work, and TDOT has changed the rules now so that the funding is uh, cash only. And our portion is 10% of the match. 
So we're obligated to come up with $500,000 to match the $5 million. I put a plan together for Coffee County, White County, and Warren County to budget $20,000 a year for the next four years, which would be $80,000 a piece. Uh, the Tri-County Railroad Authority is going to put up $100,000, and the Caney Fork and Western Railroad is going to put up $160,000. This would, this would be our $500,000 that's required to match the $5 million. And <clears throat> I submitted a formal request to Mayor Haley about this, and uh, he had asked me to come and speak to you all to answer any questions that you may have about this. So that's what I'm here to do. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them for you. I will say that Coffee County has already uh, embraced okay. this. Wye County is getting ready to as well. I've been in constant contact with both uh, Mayor Cordell and Robinson. And so uh, it needs to be all for one, one for all, uh, since it is Tri-County and the three counties share ownership and uh, in control over those operations. And it's outsourced through Iron Horse, which is a complicated kind of management system, but uh, it works very effectively for what we do. 20, 23 miles of the railroad is in Warren County. Yes, so. it is. I do have a question. Recognize 23 Commissioner. miles. 23 miles. And out of that 23 miles, how many stops or how many companies are utilizing uh, the railroad service currently? Well, the biggest one would be Bridgestone. And uh, the one in Morrison, I think, is uh, Cross Ties. Cross -ties. Uh, Spar Gas is down in McMinnville. Uh, plastics place. I'm not sure of all of them, but there's several. Who sits on the board now at uh, Caney Fork Railroad? The chairman is uh, um, Mayor Robertson of White County. The executive chairman, I mean the vice chairman, is Winston Brooks of Tallahoma. Uh, I'm the executive director, and there's two members from Warren County, White County, in Coffee County, and there's two members from um, Tallahoma, Manchester, Doyle, Morrison, and Sparta. Do you know who Mayor Haley, the board members are in Warren County? Uh, Jana Ringman is one Jana of Ringman, them. Pete Sands, Pete Sands, Jim Brock, and uh, one other. I can't think of who it is. Well, I do. I said on it too. So I mean, yes, I, I said on it. Yes, I have a question. Yes. How many tractor trailer loads does it take to equal the weight that you can haul on one box car? I know everybody's con concerned about the cost of freight these days. About, I think it averages about four uh, truck loads, one car. On a, on a load of soybeans, um, it's three and a half semi loads to a, a car load of beans. But the major the major use of the uh, railroad now is carbon black for Bridgestone. Bridgestone. Yes, I, I could not operate without it. That's correct. That's it cannot they, be shipped any other. They're they're in full effect. support of what we're trying to do, and have written letters to uh, legislatures and in, and in, in state of Tennessee to help fund the railroad. So. They're giving us their full support. Even from Washington, they're giving us their support. Their lobbyists are. And that's what I do, too. I live in Nashville, and I, I go and lobby. I don't, I'm don't. i not a registered lobbyist, but I go to the alliance meeting and on behalf <coughs> of the Tri-County Railroad Authority and try to get funding for us. So that's part of what I do. And so this money's been sitting there for some time tied up in this that's lawsuit great. about what the what the fate of that money was going to be for the short lines. Right. And uh, so the, the condition was that each county put a little skin into the game, and that's going to be our match to, to receive that $5 million. I think it's a small price it's, to pay to keep the biggest, uh, it's highest paying. It's order. all counties, or no, uh, we won't do it at all if we don't get all three counties to agree to it. So, But Coffee County has committed to it. And I hope that you all in White County will do so also. 
Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Uh, Mr. Conyers, I just wanted to, um, to thank you um, for your help with our uh, uh, issue in District 3 on Heron Road a few months back and your responsiveness <coughs> to me and me bombarding you with several phone calls yeah, about that right. situation. And, uh, really appreciate your help and your advocacy on that. Thank you, sir. All right. We're not through with that project yet. We're still working. Good deal. One, one question I do have. Now, the Depot Bottom is, you know, a hub here for the city of McMinnville. Has the city of McMinnville been approached or anything? Any help out of the city of McMinnville as well? No, we, we tried to just keep it in the counties. Uh, it got too diluted to try to get into individual cities. I, I talked to... Uh, it's owned by the counties and not the cities anymore. It's just part of representation. So. I talked to the three mayors about that, and they felt like it would just be better off to just leave it between the three counties. So that's the approach that we've taken. One, I have a question. Brown. Do the other counties have engines like and house them the way we do, or are we the only place that has the engines? You're the only one that has the engines. Commissioner Savage. Yes, sir. Is it safer? I heard you talking about the, the propane. Is it safer for the, the, to haul the hazardous, <coughs> hazardous material by rail than it is a vehicle? Yes. In my opinion, it is. Yes. Um, there's restrictions about how many of those cars that you can put in the line, and they follow those rules pretty, pretty rigidly. They'll get fined severely for it if they're caught cheating on that. So they don't do it. Plus, if they ever had a derailment and, and they were not in line like they should be, they would be fined severely for that. That's why it's critical to get those improvements on our lines for these three counties so we continue to operate effectively right. without and you all have some, you all, we have the Collins River Bridge and we have the bridge downtown that, that needs a lot of work. So we're looking at some major projects just in Warren County. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions for Mr. Conyers? Thank you, Mr. Conyers. We'll be voting on this resolution here shortly. Next presentation is from the Warren County Soil Conservation District. Had several commissioners ask about what does the Soil Conservation District Office do and why is it tied to USDA? So I've invited Neil Walker here and Janice Gillespie. And we have Matt Fino back there as well, also works uh, in the USDA office in soil conservation. So uh, we're going to recognize Ms. Gillespie. Thank you, Mayor Haley. I'm going to give you a little history about soil conservation districts in case you don't know how they got started. The Dust Bowl of the 1930s led to the unprecedented <coughs> loss of topsoil and desolation of farmland on the on the continent to a scale not seen before or since. Federal soil and water conservation law and policy became a reality when the Soil Erosion Service was established with the U.S. Department of Interior on August the 25th, 1933. Dr. Hugh Hammett Bennett was a key figure who influenced Congress to envision a new method of action whereby the federal government would attempt to persuade and assist private landowners, primarily farmers and ranchers, to voluntarily implement soil conservation practices on their lands. The Soil Conservation Act of 1935 was adopted and the Act re renames the Soil Erosion Service to the Soil Conservation Service. It was placed in the U.S. Department of Agriculture in 1994 Soil Conservation Service, or SCS, was renamed again to the Natural Resources Conservation Service and remains under the USDA. They changed the name so we could pr protect all of our natural resources. This partnership between the conservation districts and NRCS is one that is carefully designed. Its unique, productive <coughs> relationship continues to be a model for providing federal resources at the local level. Conservation districts are the medium by which cooperation can take place through landowners, and state agencies, federal agencies, programs, grants, and a variety of other partners. 
Districts provide help to the landowners and others on resource management, land use planning, and detailed soils information. Districts set the local priorities, administer those grants, facilitate fund leveraging, and provide a variety of outreach services. Through the legal powers given to the districts, they can seek funding from public and private sources. Districts are independent, nonprofit, semi governmental entities. The function of the soil conservation districts is to take technical, financial, and educational resources, whatever their source, public, private, local, state, federal, and focus or coordinate them so that they meet the needs of the local land user for conservation of soil, water, and related resources. The Warren County Soil Conservation District was organized September the 24th, 1941. <coughs> we were the 12th county in the state to be developed. The governing body of the district consists of supervisors, also known as board members. Three are elected and two are appointed by the State Soil Conservation Committee. They serve a three-year term limit and may be elected and appointed with no term with no term limit. Three years, but they can keep on being elected or appointed. Our board members are Gary Martin, Mike Bowden, Beth Blankenship, Jim Malouli, and Justin Fan. Our USDA NRCS staff is Matt Fino and Rich Hansen. TDA watershed coordinator is Clark Collis. Clark is a state employee and uh, Matt and Rich are the federal employees. And your county personnel is Neil Walker and myself. Neil has been with the district for 21 years and I have been there 36 years. There's over 3,000 conservation districts, 15,000 supervisors or board members across our nation, and there's over 7,000 district employees. Soil conservation districts serve landowners by assisting with the installation of conservation practices to prevent soil erosion, to improve water quality, and promote the stewardship of our natural resources. The Tennessee Department of Agriculture has a cost share program we apply for each year to help install those best management practices. The USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service also has programs to benefit the landowners and land users. Our office also has the task of defining highly erodible land determinations and write conservation plans to reduce the soil loss on cultivated farms. Through the Tennessee Department of Agriculture and the Natural Resources Conservation Service, our district obligated $481,744.59 toward the conservation efforts last year alone. The Tennessee Department of Agriculture provides a per diem for the monthly meeting of our board members and provides the office with $2,100 per year. Board members and personnel are encouraged to attend several informative meetings, training sessions throughout the year, and the Tennessee Association of Conservation Districts annual conference. Through a grant, TDA provides conservation district employees two workshops a year, I currently serve as the president of the Tennessee Conservation District Employees Association. There's 140 to 150 district employees in Tennessee. That number varies almost daily. NRCS hires some of them, and others seek higher paying jobs than what their county can provide. Some counties only have part-time employees and maybe just one person in the office. So we're lucky here so far that we've had two full-time employees, and we really <coughs> appreciate it. Our office is also responsible for administering the Emergency Watershed Protection Program. Federal funds have been applied for in, on six sites after the recent storms and the flooding. The sites were visited and identified as possible EWP projects and have been submitted for funding. The USDA supplies our building, our utilities, computers, all office equipment, some supplies and numerous training sessions for the Farm Services Agency, the Ag Credit, NRCS, and the Soil Conservation District. 
our office is located, if you don't know, is uh, <coughs> at the corner of the Faultless Springs Road and the 70 Bypass. We also provide information and education programs to teachers, <coughs> students, and adults. The Warren County Soil Conservation District supports the Envirothon program. That program is an environmental competition for high school students to demonstrate their knowledge of envir environmental science and natural resources management. A list of some of the other functions the district and office personnel with the guidance of our board members are the county fair exhibit, field days, multi-county wildlife meeting, nursery field day, a nursery round table, Farm Bureau Ag Day, poster contest, the Envirothon, the Rotary River cleanup, Dibral School Outdoor Garden, and Bridgestones Beach Field Days. We also recognize a conservation farmer each year at our awards luncheon. The district obtained a grant through the Tennessee Department of Agriculture for a 30-foot folding trailed crop roller for farmers to use. That roller is used to terminate cover crops to make it easier to plant row crops into the residue that benefits soil health. We have sent in a request also for another, for a four foot crop roller or crimper for the nurseries to use. All programs and services of the Warren County Soil Conservation District are on a non-discriminatory non-discriminatory, I knew I'd mess up somewhere, basis without regard to race, color, national origin, religion, sex, marital status, or handicap. Also, recently we're just on Facebook and we're under Warren SCD. Thank you. Before you leave, I just want to give a big shout out. Part of the reason I got you here tonight was Janice has been a faithful employee of the, of the county uh, for, since 1983. And she does serve as president of the Tennessee Conservation District Employees Association. She is office manager there at the Soil Conservation Office. She served multiple roles uh, uh, in her capacity as office manager across the state for scholarships and other committee chairs as well. But she also got recently recognized, and uh, it is an honor, and I think lots of people don't know that you received the National Conservation Outstanding District Professional and Board Member, which is a, a huge honor for a small rural community to have someone to receive that. So I want to recognize you with that tonight, but also recognize you with an Employee Appreciation Certificate for winning that honor and for being employee for those 36 years. And so uh, we like to give shout outs to those amongst us who uh, overachieve sometimes and uh, and bring recognition to us, which you have to Warren County in attending these conferences and receiving this national award. So I want to come out and hand this to you. Shake your head. So next item of business is old business. Any commissioner got old business to bring before the committee tonight, commission tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. Item number one is budget amendment SF-FY1819-1. And uh, Mr. Cotton, you want to explain that budget amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this would be a budget amendment requested by um, Director Roberts to transfer some excess funds from his truck driver's line to clerical personnel in order for him to hire someone to be at the office um, during regular operations to answer phones and direct concerns uh, throughout the day when he is out on calls or busy doing other things. This went through committee approval, so is there a... Moved, uh, Doc. We have a make a motion from, from Commissioner England. Second. We have a second from Commissioner Brown. We need a roll call vote on this, and we'll call for the vote. Michael Bell? Yes. Carl D. Bolden? Yes. Carl E. Bolden? Yes. Carly Brown? Yes. David Dunlap? Yes. Randy England? Yes. Deborah Evans? Yes. Richard Grissom? Yes. Stephen Hilton? Yes. Robert Hennessy? 
Yes. Tori Jenkins? Yes. Ron Lee? Yes. Gary Martin? Yes. Daniel Owens? Yes. Gary Prater? Yes. Christy Ross? Yes. Scott Rudley? Yes. Tommy Savage? Yes. Tyrone Spartman? Yes. Joseph Stotts? Yes. Philip Stout? Yes. Cole Taylor? Yes. Clay Wilcher? Yes. Motion carries. Item number two is a Tri-County Railroad resolution. So it's brought up there on the screen. And so it's a resolution authorizing Warren County to contribute up to $80,000 to the Tri-County Railroad Authority as a 10% match for TDOT Railroad Authority grant funds to be stretched over four years. And whereas the conditions are outlined in that resolution, is there a motion? We have a motion of Commissioner Savage, a second uh, from Commissioner Ross, Anybody want to speak to that motion or have any more questions? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, uh, as Gary Prater pointed out, Commissioner Prater, you know, not only does the factories uh, benefit in this, but also the railroad ties. And uh, the railroad ties tie to the sawmills, the sawmills tie to the, the loggers and stuff uh, over in the Morrison area. If we don't have this railroad uh, coming through our county, then a lot of, of that's got to be trucked out of the county. Uh, causing it more cost effective and stuff and so I just want to express uh, I, I'm going to vote for this and I hope you all do too because it's, it's more than just the factories it's more than just Bridgestone it's more than DN plastics it's also uh, our agriculture as well future growth as well but you know a lot of short lines were abandoned and they never were reopened again and so we would not have Bridgestone without that railroad right now so they would have taken their investment elsewhere expansion they've got planned now plus future expansions all hinge upon the operation of that railroad so a motion is second any further discussion then we'll call for the vote Michael Bell? yes Carl Bolden? yes Carl e. Bolden? yes Carlene Brown? yes David Dunlap? yes Randy Ingler? yes Deborah Evans yes Richard Grissom yes Stephen Hilton yes Robert Hennessy yes Lori Jenkins yes Yes. Gary Martin? Yes. Daniel Owens? Yes. Gary Prater? Yes. Christy Ross? Yes. Scott Rudley? Yes. Tommy Savage? Yes. Tyrone Spartman? Yes. Joseph Stotts? Yes. Philip Stout? Yes. Cole Taylor? Yes. Blaine Wilcher? Yes. Anyone want to change your vote? 23 yes. Motion carries. Item number three is approval of Constable Bonds. Uh, County Clerk Scott, you want to explain that? We have a motion to approve those bonds. We have a motion from Carl E. Bolden and second from Commissioner Stotts. Okay, roll call vote. Michael Bell? Yes. Carl D. Bolden? Yes. Carl E. Bolden? Yes. yes. Carl E. Brown? Yes. David Dunlap? Yes. Randy England? Yes. Deborah Evans? Yes. Richard Grissom? Yes. Stephen Hilton? Yes. Robert Hennessy? Yes. Yes. Ron Lee? Yes. Gary Martin? Yes. Daniel Owens? Yes. Gary Prater? Yes. Christy Ross? Yes. Scott Rudley? Yes. Tommy Savage? Yes. Tyrone Sparkle? Yes. Joseph Stouts? Yes. Philip Stout? Yes. Cole Taylor? Yes. Lane Wilcher? Yes. Anyone want to change your vote? Yes. Motion carries. Item number four is approval of notaries. I think you have a list of notaries. Uh, in front of you, is there a motion to accept from Commissioner Bell? Is there a second from Commissioner? I don't know who was first. Commissioner Jenkins. Call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Announcements. Uh, one announcement is our website's up and running. So if those of you that uh, have been able to uh, go on and look at that I got a picture of Cumberland Caverns live up there uh, and so it's uh, user friendly it showcases all that's good about Warren County upcoming event scheduling um, our rules and procedures committee will be meeting tomorrow night at 630 in early voting room in order to consider uh, the nonprofit requests 
And so any and all of you are, are you know, allowed to come. It's an open meeting and ask questions. Many of the nonprofits, and so that'll be 6.30, and hopefully we'll be able to move through those fairly quickly. Uh, another announcement is Memorial Day, of course, is Monday, and county offices will be closed. We'll be having our memorial event out at the airport, uh, the uh, sunrise service out there. So our local units will be presenting the colors and honoring the war dead. So we invite you to do that. Exchange Club is also doing the uh, Field of Remembrance at Caney Fork Electorate. That will start on Saturday. It will be open on Sunday and on Monday on Memorial Day as well. And uh, Mayor Newman and I will be reading a joint proclamation about the, uh, the Remembrance Field and how we're honoring our, um, our war dead and those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. Um, another announcement, and this is um, a proclamation. It was a joint proclamation between uh, Mayor Newman and myself. Whereas we all recognize families are the foundation of every community and parents play a measurable role in the well-being of children. And whereas unfortunate circumstances oftentimes create a dysfunctional home environment for many children. And whereas foster parents provide stability in the lives of displaced children, many of whom have suffered abuse, neglect, and abandonment. Whereas many nonprofit organizations, such as Youth Villages, provides a valuable service by matching these neglected children with caring foster parents. And whereas any single or married adult over the age of 25 who receives training and meets qualifications can become a foster care parent and receive a stipend for welcoming a child into his or her household. And whereas Youth Villages offers free adoption options for those who qualify as foster parent candidates. Therefore, let it be known that McMinnville Mayor Ben Newman and Warren County Executive Jimmy Haley do proclaim May as Foster Care Month across the community and urge residents to consider becoming foster parents to the children who need loving and nurturing families. So. Something to recognize. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. What time does it start Monday? Uh, which, which Monday? Airport. Airport is 7. They said on the radio this morning it's 8. Uh, unless they've changed it. Yeah. Have they changed it to 8? So they've got a new group kind of organizing, so I guess it is 8 o'clock. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Bobby Ray Memorial will also be at the, uh, at the cemetery at 10 o'clock, and so a unit uh, from... Uh, uh, friends and uh, people who served with Bobby Ray will be doing a memorial service to recognize Bobby Ray and his 50th anniversary there. Yes, sir. Move to adjourn. So, we have any other announcements one, to come before the committee? We have a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman. A second? Yes, sir. Yes, have sir. one thing. All right. Relay for Life will be downtown again this year, I think 5 o'clock, June the 1st. Lots of good food, games. See a lot of your constituents and raise some money for a great cause. Thank you. Any Mr. other Chairman, announcements? I have one. We have a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, can Mr. I make Brown? one Yes, you got another one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just want to point out uh, uh, all the commissioners, you have a brochure, should have a brochure in front of you tonight. And I want to make one statement about this program. Um, I recently visited the Franklin County Jail and received these brochures from their reentry program. They are running an excellent program in Franklin County when it comes to re-entry and reducing recidivism rates in the jail. Uh, their program is very extensive. They have a complete annex building with a team of about seven to eight individuals that are working on job placement for these inmates, uh, preparing them to live on their own again, uh, participating in uh, uh, counseling programs and services while they're um, at the jail. Uh, the leader of this program is Christine Hopkins. I am working with her on uh, trying to open up doors and avenues for Warren County, possibly be considered as a, a place for future program. Uh, again, all that is, uh, at this point, consideration and opportunity, possible opportunities. I do think it's very positive opportunities for the county. Um, I'm also communicating with uh, Senator Bowling and Representative Bricken on the possibilities of this in the future. Uh, I've briefly spoken with uh, Sheriff Myers about it, um, uh, Executive Haley as well. Uh, I know that we've touched upon it in committee um, in a minor aspect, just from the standpoint of me talking with Christine Hopkins. And so again, I just want to point out that I would encourage you to take a look at this brochure. 
And please, if you have any questions about it, please, I'd, I'd love to answer them for you or talk to you further about this program. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. Any other announcements? So we do have a motion to adjourn from Commissioner Prater. Is there a second from Commissioner Taylor? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Court is closed. Thank you all.